What up? It's your girl Crush back with another episode of Podcast Crush. Real people, real topics, real talk. Today, I have some artists, a rap group, a Detroit, a great Detroit rap group. What up, what up? What up, dog? Uh, I'm Scott here, the big dog. And I go by Wild Man Mike. Collectively, we are them big boys. Them big boys. How y'all come up with that name? Uh, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that little <laughs> fella. Oh, my God. Okay, 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 okay. So y'all got it from the side. Y'all, for... sorry, y'all. I, I got a visa line in my, my, my speech is a little. It's y'all <laughs> physique. Yes, physique. from the physique. Yeah, okay. that's the physique, the stature. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. From there, right. we just about being creative so, about know, how we uh we spelled yeah. it because, as you could tell, that's probably you probably can see it's a very common name. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah them to, big boys, B O I Z Z. Yeah. B O I Z Z, not B O Y S, not no regular boys. Mm -hmm. Okay, regular. I like that. I like that. I like that. So, how long y'all been a rap group? Uh, we've been a group about. Uh, about 16 months uh, a group. Yeah, about 16 months. What yeah. made y'all want to collab and come together? Um, Oddly enough, it was uh, it was an idea I had Um, when I decided to, I actually decided to get back into music. Mike was already doing his thing, and I was like, I need to get back in music. I was like, I want to start a group. And I picked Motion, and Mike and uh, some other guys was in the group initially. Then we kind of had to trim the group down a little bit. But now it's just them big boys, me and Mike. So how many how many people did y'all start with? Six. 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 Yes. Yeah. From six to two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, only the strong surviving this music shit, nigga. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, but, you know, it, was, you know, it was just more so that that everybody wasn't on the same page you know it, it wasn't so much about kind of like surviving and continuing forward it was that we we all came to a pass where it was like I think we all um had to focus on our own you know our, our own individual goals we put out the EP together as a group and it just after that there we all kind of went our separate ways but are all still real cool pretty much that's yeah, what's up, but that well, does see you talking to somebody who's came from a rap group also, and I, I'm not even talking about like uh when I was in Champagne Gang. I'm talking about when before Champagne Gang when I tried to be in a rap girl group. You see what I'm saying? It don't it, it don't always work. It doesn't mm -hmm. always work, and it's not because people are at odds. It's just that everybody ain't going in the same direction. Yeah, yeah, it, it was one of those situations with us for sure. It was like, all right, we gonna keep pushing this way. Oh, you can't be there. Hey, it is what it is, and it just kind of became a thing where that was the norm. It was never there was never any fallouts of any type. Like I said, we were just actually yesterday, uh, pretty much hanging around all of the dudes who are you know who were part of the group but are back focusing on their own, and it ain't never been nothing but love with those guys. And so, they always um... uh, always gonna be big boys originals. So are they all doing their own music thing individually? Yep, yep. Yeah. And I think that was part of the problem because I think uh all of us getting together at that time, everybody had something going on. So yeah, uh so we, we couldn't be on the same page. People, you know, you they pick and choose what they want to put more effort into. So it kind of you know put a strain on what yeah, was happening the with thing, the group thing ain't for everybody. I mean, even when even people you when you love people, it just ain't the group thing. But it don't make like like uh wild man said, it doesn't make it less uh the relationship less important or of less value. You feel me? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think it kind of made us all stronger a little bit because we oh, all wow. other through um a conflict, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, we all got still got respect and love, and there was never anything to to address because we, you know, 
everything was out on the table as it was. There was always an understanding and, and nobody feels really bad about how it progressed and how it played out. So we still, like I said, get a lot of support from the guys. Oh, that's what's up. So, like, do y'all, um, like, still do any work, like, far as, like, features or anything like that? Work Still working together? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We we definitely swing in and out of out of features with all of the same guys, you know, some some more often than others. And that's just for because of logistics of it. But, you know, other than that, yeah, you know, we still would work with them all the time. That's what's up. So how would you decide? How would you describe your style? Wow, man. OK, me specifically. Um, uh, I like to give myself uh, um, the. Uh, you know, high energy is the first place I would start with. Usually high energy, high high presence. Um, my rapping style is more of an intellectual kind of layered rap style where I like to, to describe it like this. I like to put on a facade of simplicity and have a guise of intellect underneath it for those who want it. Um, I like to make catchier music that grips people and, and gets you feeling it right away. But for those who like to listen for closer, I like to leave little Easter eggs in my okay. songs. And I like to leave things uh, double or triple layered on entendres so that people can catch that if that's the type of rap they're looking for. But on the surface level, you really wouldn't pay attention to it. Even if you never got some of the bars, you could still appreciate the music for what it is. And, and in, in certain facets, I'm more simplistic than others. Um, but then there are certain songs where it's like, no, this has got to be completely out the wall with with layered with 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 uh, um things to find in the lyrics and in the music. So I love it when someone comes up to me and says, "I peeped you. I peeped what you said that that nobody else peeped." And then when they tell me what they thought, and I find that they write, they actually dug out that that layer of it. It, it feels good to me. So I do that a lot. Okay, so you would describe yourself as a more uh, metaphorical uh, type of rapper. Yeah, not direct comparisons all of the time, but I like to to tell stories under under the, the, the facade of the song. You know, I like to tell different experiences. And I'm just more of a fan of saying things that people haven't said before, uh, touching on topics that people don't normally talk about in hip hop and things like that, while still having like I said, that overall package of this is just generally fire. Okay. Interesting. Uh, hmm. Scarhead, what about you? Uh, I'm, I'm almost, I'm kind of the opposite. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm more of a straight shooter. I like to say exactly what what I feel. I put it right out there directly like that. Uh, I'm not huge on metaphors and punchline, although I tend to use them from time to time. And I'm more about how I'm huge, not even more about, it. I'm just huge on how I feel when I hear what's being said in play. So okay. uh, for me, I put the song, when I make a song, if when, when I play the song back, if I don't feel good, I don't like it, I trash it. I don't care okay. about how cold my bars was, none of that. Let's see, I gotta stop you. I gotta stop you. I'm an artist too, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I have to tell you that a lot of times the things that you don't think are good have a lot more potential. And the things that you think are great don't have as much potential. <laughs> so sometimes those songs that you think are not it get a few opinions on them and shop them out to friends, family, or people who uh, opinions you value before you throw out a song because you're not happy with it. Because sometimes it might just need a, a little bit of a little work. It might need a little touch of something. might be missing a little something, but it don't mean it's trash. Don't mean it's trash. And I had to learn that myself because it was a lot of times when I was heavy into uh, music I uh, trash a lot of good songs. And then when other people heard them, they said, no, this is good. But the songs that I thought was like, yeah, yeah, this the one, they like, it's all right. But this other song that you did is better because it has X, Y, Z. You see what I'm saying? Right. 
So just get out of second thought sometimes. That's all I'm saying. Oh, no. It, it, I mean, it don't really be second thought for me. It's just that I'm huge on any time, even right now, uh, if I was, I jump in my car. Uh, when I hear music, I'm supposed to feel some type of way. If that, if I'm listening to music by anybody, I don't care if it's jazz, R&B, hip hop, if I have no feeling to it, trash. You know what I'm saying? And that's, I, I don't want to listen to it no more. I got to feel. But let me ask you a question. Life. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do that mean that the song cannot be successful because you don't feel something? Because that sounds more like a biased opinion. Because, see, look, what we might not like 10 million people in the world, but you love know them. Yeah, but you know what? I also I, 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 I come to the conclusion that. Me personally, <laughs> before I, I always got to play devil's advocate over here on podcast crush. Yeah, but before I, <laughs> before I became an artist, I was a consumer. Okay, right. So even now to this day, I purchase music. I Me buy too. music. Me right? too. I'm a hottie. A lot, of artists, a lot of artists don't. See what I'm saying? So yeah. if I'm not willing to buy it, how would I expect anyone else to buy it? Okay. I'm okay. Get it. So that that's that's a lot on. Uh, that plays a lot on anything that I would want to put out. If I don't see myself buying it, why would I put it out and hope somebody else might like it enough to buy it? Right, right. I get it. And again, that, that that's not to say that that you know we believe that um, if we don't like it, that it's a bad song. That's really not, not the case. You know, we don't judge it that way. You know what I mean? You know, Scarhead's method of judging it is actually a lot different than mine for the most part. When we came together, um, we started operating in a way where we apply both of our methodologies to to basically deploy uh, um, and, and build in the places where the other one lacked. Um, when I come, when I, you know, talk about, uh, I like to layer things. I like to add Easter eggs in my music. Um, it was Scarhead who sat me down and told me, he was like, but you got to make sure it feels good. You can't just give people a piece of your art and expect them to relate to it on any level without making sure that it's something that they can relate to at their hearts. That's why I have that top layer of, of uh, let me make sure it's catchy. Let me make sure it's easy to follow. Let me make sure that when it hits, it it, it gives you some type of uh, of feeling that, that you can't explain in a lot of cases. Um, but on the flip side of that, I know that I'm very good at, layering and putting intellectual thoughts and and I come from a nerdy background so I like to incorporate nerdiness into my music sometimes but in a really serious way because there's a difference between when you're joking and when you've lived it you know what I mean sure. and when I have when I when I talk about being true to myself I put those experiences into my music whereas some people would look at that as cornball you know what i mean they're like this is corny why you talk about something like video games or anything like that and it's like because those are my experiences you know I, instead of me being 100 percent a street dude our group was just more about presenting big dudes in a Emotion, fun that's a totally and engaging other. way you know it's not about <laughs> situation being, you know what I mean? overly all in all it's just it's, it's not so much of a viewpoint of trying to uh, um, just base it off of our opinion is more so making sure it's consumable. You know what I mean? We make sure that when we put out stuff, we want to know whether we like the song or not, that it's going to be consumable. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you gotta at, um, least, you gotta at least feel good about it. Almost definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I just hate to see artists uh, measure things as not good based off their own personal preference because as consumers everybody is different and just because you don't like something don't mean that you know the next person won't. and that's all i'm trying to say you know like i like i said and i repeat over here i'm always play devil advocate and if y'all watch any of my episodes you will see that i'm always giving my uh my guest advice so don't take it personal <laughs> no, no, no no that's good okay <laughs> okay, because, you know, I'm an artist, too, and I made a lot of mistakes, you know what I'm saying? And I'm doing podcasts, and then I'm learning something different, so it's always a learning experience. Everything that we're doing, we always learning, and we always growing, and we always trying to move into the next phase, you know? All right. So, let's talk about this new EP 
that y'all got coming on. So I know this is y'all's second one. Y'all on y'all's second EP. What's the name of it? For real, for real. For real, for real. Yep. For, for real, for real? You just real. look up FR, FR, for real, for real. For real, for real? Mm-hmm. <laughs> for real, for real. For real? Same time right. for you, for real. Okay, when is dropping? Uh, April 27th. April 27th. Hey. Yeah, okay, y'all. Yeah. Y'all make sure. Tell the people where it's going to be at so they could go. Tell them the name, the group name, and where they could go look for the album at and win. Them Big Boys. The group name, Them Big Boys, D E M B I G G B O I Z Z. Uh, it's going to be on all major digital platforms anywhere CD Baby distributes music. Uh, um, Man, you can expect some, it's going to be a ball of energy and just a lot of lyrics and, man, a uh, couple couple features by uh, China. We got a feature with China, the artist, uh, Motion McGuire. That's it. That's that's all we got. Who producers y'all work with? What producers? Uh, on this one, we got uh, Math. And, uh, a track lab, yeah, and, and and track labs of VA. Okay, so what uh was the motivation or the inspiration behind this project? Man, um, like uh after the first project, uh I was I was kind of like um I was a little unsatisfied with it, but I dropped the solo project literally right after the ep i dropped the solo project i was a little dissatisfied with the the first project and i went to mike and i was just like mike i just want to do it me and you mm -hmm. and uh we went to work at it mike was uh mike was at the studio with me a couple of times when i was working on my solo and you know like me and mike just meshed real well so how did y'all come up with that concept y'all just felt like I'm going to just be for real, for real, like, just for real, like. It, it kind of, it is crazy because it kind of hit me uh, in a conversation. And literally, uh, I was just thinking, like, the first the first uh, EP was called Big Boy Business. So, like, with the second one, you know, somebody asked me, what y'all calling me? I'm like, I was going to say, man, we should be still about that business, for real, for real. There <laughs> <laughs> For real, for real. It's, it's, it's basically so to say y'all ain't y'all ain't finna forget about us no time soon. <laughs> okay, for real, this, for real. We still, we still about that business. For real, for real. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, I like that. How many um songs on that joint? Uh, right now we're looking at seven. May possibly be eight, but seven. Okay. Okay. Eight, ain't eight an album? I thought eight was an eight. album. I thought six was the EP. Six yeah, they was the highest that, on the EP. Seven is the an EP, and then eight to eight to twelve was an album. But yeah, yeah. we had seven right now though. Seven. Okay, y'all at seven. So y'all must yeah. got some fire joints. Y'all can't even come and na narrow it down. Like if you talk about just the pool that we had for this EP, it, it was it was crazy hard to just pick six of them. Like mm. we gonna fit this in, but can't fit that in, and it's just like okay. that's oh. how we ended up with seven. Yeah, we was we had to add to it. like okay, I feel better if we left these five out. You know what I'm saying? If we got these seven at the very least, so we was just trying to keep it short and 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 palatable and and, and easy to manage, and like hopefully we did a great job with doing that because when the other songs come about. You know, coming in, in the future projects, we're gonna see whether or not it was a, <laughs> you know, a mistake to leave them out the first time. So, yeah, because okay, yeah. okay, okay. Well, I mean, I, know I, pretty much. I feel like y'all got it though. I feel like y'all got it. I love the energy, yo. You guys seem real positive. You know what I'm saying? I like that a lot, honestly. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes people' energy just be off. You know. Hey, so, we, on a platform of love, like that's all we do is show love and and appreciate love shown, you know. Because 
I, I personally, and I don't know if this speaks to what Scarhead goes through or, or has gone through, but I personally believe it's possible to make it in this game without without really shitting on nobody, without really, you know, it's possible to make it on a, on a platform of love and respect. And we hear and see so much in our music biz of bad business and people doing shady things and whatnot. And I, I understand we're going to run into them kind of people and we're going to have to deal with them accordingly. But the people who mess with us know that we mess with them in a genuine way. I even just put a post a little while ago on the Instagram where it was like, you know, we, if you on our page, if we following you, that means we actually think you don't, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Out of situation, our, our entire Instagram was started fresh, literally right before we went on tour, uh, did some of the tour stops with Bone Thugs. And we up to 300 people. Most people would look at that and be like, that's not a popping gram. But when you consider that we didn't travel five or six states in the past four months and all 300 of those was handshakes and people we interacted with and watched perform and and encouraged and they encouraged us. You know, you build a foundation of respect and love and there's, after that comes the interaction. It seems like that's the method to do it. So we just following suit. We push it forward with that plan. Mm, I like that. I like that. Uh, mm. I was just about to ask y'all, how do y'all feel about drill music? Um, it's funny to me. I think drill music is snitch music. That's mm. all they do is, is uh, talk about what they doing and about to do and they do it and they get locked up. Um, the, the, <laughs> energy, the energy behind it, I think the energy is sick. You know, like I've heard some real fire through that drill music and like, man, because I would, you know, I'm I'm a truck driver by profession. I like to ride and that would give me energy to ride and just that. But um, I just think that, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how much these dudes think about the lyrics when they doing these songs and then the action afterwards. Yeah, that's like um the Chicago um rappers and King Vine and Dirk and all of them and Chief Keep and all of them. Do you feel like uh some of it has a negative uh representation of music? I personally feel like it absolutely does. Um mm -hmm. as an artist you know what I mean? I have to understand separating the artist from the art because, you know, I still have an outside of my, my music life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but authenticity has always been a, a, a pillar of hip hop music. You know what I mean? Of rap music. Mm -hmm. And degree, there is room for anyone of any type to be a rapper or be a musician in this field. But at the same time, you have to be careful you know what I mean, of what you're doing, because what's the point of us being in the in the public eye? What's the point of getting the money behind it or anything that comes with this fame if you're just going to sacrifice it because you decided to throw a couple lyrics in there that, that exposes you to, you know, all type of investigation? At the end of the day, my plan is not to become a rapper and then a gangster. You know, the plan of rapping was to express myself. You know what I mean? To become a better person. That's the whole reason why I got into this was to mm -hmm. to, to come shell more. I was very, very, uh, you know, very humble, very uh, um, meek growing up. And, you know, for some people, it, it's an avenue. But it's like if you're doing things that you don't want people to know about, the last thing you want to do is tell everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> that's where the creativity comes in. It's like you got to be creative if you're going to you know, risk your life by putting things out there that you probably don't want put out there, at least be creative enough to mask it. You know what I mean? To mm -hmm. try to simple deniability. Don't be you know saying what? I did, we did. Like, you know what names me? out there. You know what the craziest part of this is I remember I remember when I was growing up and uh so I think back and you know everybody talk about man this that that real rap, that real gangster. But the most notorious gangster rap groups that I knew growing up, all of them were studio gangsters. Like, none of them cats was really putting in work. N.W.A., uh, only one of them dudes was from the street, but they was the most gangster group ever. 
You know yeah, what I'm saying? The thing about that is that's still happening right now. That's like yeah. a lot of these dudes, they not really into none of that shit. And then some of them is yeah. even DL, but that's uh, for another show. Like, yeah, yeah, they, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's something totally different for real. Yeah, but, see, but what I'm saying, when I say that, is to say that, uh, see, when them dudes did it, they didn't decide to become the gangster. Exactly. They just when they played became it wrong. Famous, they took it and rolled with it. But mm -hmm. these dudes now, once they talk to gangster talk, now they, they feel they need to become the gangster. So they run out and catch a case after the fact. Like that, you made it. Because they feel yeah. like they got to prove they stuff to their fans because the fans right. be on their head now. And for me, believe. that's where the BS stops because if, it, if I have to be anything else than what I already am in order to keep a fan base, I don't want that fan base. Not you know what real. I mean? As an artist, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, you run into a rapper who just want the lifestyle that they rapping about. You know what I mean? Then there's the tenth time where you get the either street dude or creative dude or artsy dude who just happens to have a talent for putting words together, and he chooses to express himself that way. Those are the people I gravitate to nine times out of ten. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's not to say that you can't be a street dude and rap, and I won't gravitate to you, because I, I know some... I know some real deal Holyfield kind of characters and they are about everything they rap about. But at the same time, it's like when you're, it's a difference between the authenticity authenticity of telling the story that you've been through and then, or faking it until you go into a situation where now you, you know, now you are in over your head and you have to do some shit that you ain't want to, you know, that's, that's basically what happened with six, nine, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not he he wasn't never built for that life. He wasn't never built for that. You know? So All no. right, so I'm, we getting it. into the 30 minute mark of the show. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, this YouTube, you know, niggas' attention spans is this big and, you know, <laughs> we don't want to make this too damn long. These kids can't sit down for five damn minutes. So let me <laughs> let me get some bars. Let me get some bars. Who who got some bars for me? Let me get eight bars. Eight bars? Oh uh, snap! Uh, oh, when it comes to this shit, I'm raw with it. Whether it's the bars I recite or the dick I'm hitting your bra with. If a nigga wanna leave, go ahead and get on that frog shit or get left in your neighbor's yard like some dog shit. I ain't Ooh. here for the game plan. I'm game changing, and I don't get too turned by what these lames saying. Some niggas mm. move making. I'm money making. And I love my life. That's why most niggas hate me. And if a nigga got beef, he just sealed his fate. Because my chopper turned his beef into pepper steak. If I Ooh. raise the K and let it spray at your midsection, it'll smoke your ribs like famous days. Niggas go hey. with beef smoke. So every time they go and mo, they just mimic me. But that's that fake shit, deceit by trickery. And real niggas can always sense that fake energy. Ooh. Hey, that was fire. <laughs> Thank you. All right, come on, let's go. I got something for you, like a little six. What you got for me? She got for me. I get it in. Cause what's always on my mind is get the cake. Cop and bake rolls when I innovate. Watch me as I demonstrate. Hit the stage, rock room, renovate, cardiac flow. Mm -hmm. Let's reiterate. Hearts race, defibrillate. Like a car mm. taste on state. Pedal down like waving flags out the starting gate. Niggas hate, cause they're envious of all the hits I make. Hardy boy. Okay. With that I make them Harlem shake, sealing fates, dipping out of state on my enemies, leaving villain in my wake, basking my energy, suffer my concoction, the most caustic synergy mixed with the utmost destructive delivery, Ooh. lyrically stability with monster energy, tower over all my enemies who hold hostilities, but this just how the business be. I, I want them to envy me because secretly they love me and they want them to be friends with me. Okay, and that's usually how it goes. <laughs> Hi, wow, man. Hey, y'all killed that. <laughs> I like the gang shit. Shout out to the big boys. All right, the I mean, them boys. big boys, them big boys. So, all right, so I play this game on Podcast Crush, Very Fuck Kill. Have y'all ever seen anybody play that before? No. Yeah, yeah. You have Scarlet? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do y'all's a little different than I've been doing everybody else's. I'm going to give each of you three different three different women, and y'all choose which one you would marry, fuck, or kill. 
Okay, so, I've seen a fuck Mary Kill before. Yeah. The first one is going to be Hillary Clinton. The second one is going to be Monique. And the third one is going to be Beyonce. Uh, kill, kill Monique. Kill Monique? Yes. Why right would kill Mo? Monique out of there for both of us. <laughs> you definitely. Yeah. I'm kill Monique. I'm a fuck Beyonce and I'm a marry Hillary. That's exactly the same order. Yo, let me tell you why too. Please <laughs> tell me. I'm a fuck Beyonce because she's the most fuckable. I'm a yeah. and because I'm going to use her power to kill Monique. Lord help her. Monique for me. Uh, Lord, I, Lord I'm only, help him. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not attracted to Beyonce. You not? No. Not to the other two either. Yeah, not really. Y'all don't, don't Hillary, feel like being daddy. I think, I think Hillary is a, a, a low-key freak, but I, I think <laughs> I think not I think Beyonce fine. I'm just not attracted to her. I get what you're saying. And it's some people that's like that. Like I like it's some guys that I'm like, like it just Elba. He, like, he's very handsome to me, but I'm not like, ooh, yeah, I, I want him. Like, exactly. But that's he's very mean. handsome to me though. Yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, that, yeah, that, that one there. Yeah. I don't so, I, I don't get it. have to be it though, because like, like I said, like if one of two things is gonna happen is 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 I'm going to either become the president or I'm going to become somebody who <laughs> has access to the inner circle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In either case, it's still a better bet than, than marrying either one of the other two. Lord, Lord, how Beyonce, I Beyonce can make you rich. Beyonce can make you rich, but I think Hillary can make you rich and get you into the secret society. <laughs> you want to be in a secret society? No, I, I'm not sure. It's one of them things, man. Where sometimes you gotta, if you can't beat them, you gotta, you gotta join them. <laughs> oh lord, that might not what? be fun, but that still doesn't change my answer, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Monique, though, like, I, I don't know. Monique just be ranting and talking, and this fake confidence she got, I'm straight. She lost weight. She became less confident when she lost weight. All this, all this, this is a, a act about her low self esteem and her letting that dude pimper. And all that ranting and raving. All she do is rant about somebody doing her wrong. Like, ain't nobody got time. Wait a minute. Time out. Time out. How is her husband <laughs> of many years pimping her? He pimping They've been her. married and got kids together. Like, yeah. how's he pimping her? That's Mom, they ain't got no kids with that dude. Was, was, they, was, they do got kids. They got twins. Was Ice T pimping uh, Coco? Right, yeah. like why every time a man is a manager, he pimping a wife. Like y'all, why? Like, oh, that dude is pimping her from her mouth. I was, I was listening to an interview. I can't recall everything that was said, but I'm like, oh, dude, putting his hand down. It's it's like it was like extremely obvious. <laughs> and, and, and then you know how, how he's able to bang other chicks and she can't uh, mess with no other dude. It was like a lot of stuff that she said. But then when uh. Even with all that, I'm like, that's their relationship. When she got mad at Netflix because they only offered her 500 grand, she went on this whole rant. They're racist. But they offered Chris Rock 30 men. No, they offered Chris Rock 30. Dave Chappelle 30 and Chris Rock 20. Or vice versa. 20 mil. Then she said they're, uh, they're sexist. But then they offered Amy Schuler, uh 13 million. Like, no, they're not racist or sexist. They're just not interested in you. But you're making it a whole issue of other stuff. Right. Just I deal, can with, say deal with that. The I can't say that she is a, a slight tidbit problematic. I do agree. But my girl don't deserve to get killed in that thing, though, and, in, that, in all of that. And trail. Look, you, 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 you should have picked people I like less than her. <laughs> see? It's like, it's, game structure. It's not that I want to see Monique dead by any means. No, no. I actually think she's funny. But, but the uh, game structure, I get it. Structure is that's the. But the, I, I don't even like it for the game structure. Wild man is what I'm saying. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no, it was, good. Good. It was, it was, it was three more women. Game. Lord, y'all want to? Okay, y'all want to do it one more time? Yeah, yeah, I want to. Y'all want to go one more time? Yeah. 
All right, let's go one more round. Let's go one more. 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 Kind of um. When when I see this game play, I have a methodology to it, and I always try to come up with the funniest combination. <laughs> that's play this game. <laughs> okay, so we gonna go Suki Hana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oprah, Candace Owens. Oh, oh this one is tricky. Candace and Oprah. Let me hear them ask. Uh, dude, okay. you, go ahead, Scott. I, I, got, I think I got a funny one. But, no, I love Suki. You I love, love Suki. Suki? I got to throw her away, bro. Oh, my God. Ah! I love Suki with the good coochie, but you got to throw her away. Because, and, oh, man. Y'all going to throw Suki away over Candace Owens, you said. I love, which, why not? Candace is one of the most intelligent women period just black one especially black woman with with any kind of line like people the fact that she supported donald trump people threw her threw her to the wolves without actually listening to she said some people. other dumb shit too but I, yeah. I i i'm not against her but you know a lot of democrats give candace a hard time and you mm -hmm. know most of the black people are Democrats because they just don't. They don't Whatever. listen. They don't listen. They, they believe black people they believe stuck. Democrats. They believe Democrats is for black people for some reason. From the but, civil rights movement is why they believe it, but they don't understand that this ain't the civil rights movement no more. But, but wait a minute, that's wait a minute. for another day. That's for another but day. Minute, but, but just because you brought it up, I'm sorry, but the civil rights movement was 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 passed under Republican leadership. Why we got this, this this loyalty to the Democratic Party? I don't really know what ever came. Because I y'all have to watch my episode I did with my homeboy Cool V, where he talked about how the Republican Party uh, basically um, took over the Democratic Party and turned them against each other. But y'all just have to go watch the interview. But yeah, all right, come on, y'all. Mary fuck kill Suki, <laughs> Oprah. So Sky, right? You 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 putting you putting Suki on the kill list? You know I love Suki. <laughs> Man, this Oprah, is I'm marrying Oprah. I'm marrying <laughs> Oprah. I'm marrying Oprah. Is Again, when you said that, because I got Suki on the kill list too. <laughs> yeah, I'm marrying Oprah, but you know what? But this here's is the what crazy part. Here's what we swapped though. I'm marrying Candace. Okay. I'm Oprah. Physically, you, Candace is your type. Physically, Candace is your type. You fucking Oprah. Oprah. But I'm I'm a fuck Oprah. I'm a kill Suki, and I'm a marry Candace for the same for a lot of the same reasons that Scar here uh, said for for Candace's. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um. I think I would have a lot more interesting convo with um with uh Candace because of either conflicting or agreeing, you know, because there's some things she said where I conflict and there's some things she said that I've seen that I agree with totally. And when it comes down to it, I would use I would try to use Oprah through the uh the capture method <laughs> to to try to usurp power under her under her tutelage. Once again, it's no dignified Oprah. <laughs> but I, I couldn't marry Oprah openly. I would have to try to control her secretly. That would be the thing. Wow. Um, wow. I, I, I got a thing for Oprah, bro. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> you know, what like, it, what's that like thing? The, I like the meat, bro. I love the meat on women. I don't. Oprah I don't ain't like think no women. more. Oprah, Oprah ain't think no more. She, you ain't see her for the color no purple. For the color purple she, rollout. She's skinny man, as hell now. Yeah, yeah, that's for the role. She got her way. <laughs> Look at Oprah. She got. She wasn't dude. in the. She wasn't acting in color purple crazy. But look, yeah. so I want y'all right now. We at the end of the show. I appreciate y'all coming out. Um, I want y'all to tell the people where they can find y'all at, and and drop the uh, drop the date again for the mixtape oh, for um, real, for real. 
All right, the EP will be released April 27th on all digital platforms. Them big boys. Um, the name of it's going to be FRFR, you know, for real, for real. Um, you can find me on my Instagram at Scarhead underscore the big dog. Uh, the, I talk to him. Uh, the, the group, them big boys, uh, Insta is D E M E I D G B O I Z Z. And Wild Man's going to give you his Insta. Yep, it's Wild Man Mike, which is W Y L D M A N M I K E. You can find me there as well. You can hit us right in the DMs on the um on the big, big boys page. You get either one of them us from there. Or you can hit up our email. Um, I believe it's Big Boys Business at Gmail. Or yeah, I believe it's Big Boys Business at Gmail. That's our booking email. If you want to send us anything formal or try to book or whatever the case may be, you can hit us either in the Instagram or at the email address. And uh yeah, man, we're looking forward to uh pressing this next season. Hey, and y'all awesome. know me. Oh, go ahead. I would say we're extending an invite to you to come to our EP release on the 27th. Absolutely. So I'll be shooting you the invite. If I... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll be there. Now, yeah. and I appreciate y'all coming out. Thank y'all for your time. Y'all are the best. Y'all stay tuned. Uh, Don't hang up. But I just want to take this time to say make sure y'all like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment down below. Share the video. Thank you guys for all your time. Thank you guys for uh coming out fucking with us. I appreciate you guys. Podcast Crush signing off. Peace.